Only three years after the end of the Revolutionary War, the young United States once more faced a crisis. Would a new form of government save it? In the summer of 1786, Captain Daniel Shays and his men, including many unpaid veterans of the war, shut down the courts in Western Massachusetts to prevent their farms from being forcibly taken for unpaid debts. The government under the Articles of Confederation, the nation's first constitution, was too weak to raise taxes, pay its soldiers, or command the respect of other nations. The unrest led many to support a stronger form of government. As a result, the U.S. Congress called for a convention to suggest amendments to the Articles of Confederation. So in late May, 55 delegates from 12 states, the smallest one, Rhode Island, stayed home, assembled at Independence Hall in Philadelphia to propose changes. Almost immediately, they threw the whole thing out and started over from scratch. With George Washington as the convention's president, they worked hard all that hot summer in wool suits with the windows closed to keep their debates secret. The framers faced two major issues that threatened to put an end to their work how to represent the states, and how to represent enslaved people. Under the Articles, large and small states were treated equally. One state, one vote. But now states with bigger populations thought they should have more power. The framers compromised by creating a Congress with two houses, one in which the states voted by population, the other in which the states voted equally. Southern states wanted to count enslaved people as part of their total population which gave them more power in Congress, but also higher taxes. Most Northern states opposed slavery, but they also wanted more tax revenue. The framers agreed on a compromise by which three-fifths of the enslaved people were counted. Unfortunately, counting all enslaved people would have given more power to the slaveholding states, and it would not have freed a single person. Their final proposal signed on September 17 created a new constitution with stronger national powers, but also preserved the role of the states. The framers sent the constitution back to Congress, which then sent it to the states for approval or ratification. Enough states signed on in 1788 that a new form of government soon began. How might the framers have made different decisions to form a more perfect union? <laughs>